Hello, so today we've got a rather interesting mask to look at, one that's quite hard to find in the UK. A few years ago these were easier to find, um, but now it seems maybe the surplus stock of them is drying up a bit, so I actually had to import this from Germany, and it wasn't cheap. In total with postage it ended up being about 50 odd quid, but at least it's in good condition. Now, um, to be fair, with the postage it did come in about a week from ordering it, so the seller didn't you know, the seller did do a good postage option. So what this is, is the West German Z56, and I believe Z56 stands for Zivilschutz, um, and Zivilschutz would basically mean civil protection, civil defence, as far as I'm aware from my poor German skills. So, and this one, by the look of it, was made in 1957, which is quite cool. So a mask, probably designed in 1956, made in 1957, very cool. So this mask might remind you of a couple of masks, and you'll probably understand why in a minute if we talk about who manufactured these. So to me it looks like a cross between the German GM38 which was the later World War II Nazi Germany sort of um, infantry mask, sort of general gas mask and also it reminds me a bit of the Draeger Simplex which is the mask that would go on to be the Israeli 4A1 more famously. Now if you look who manufactured this mask which should be visible on the inside there, Draeger. So yeah so Draeger manufactured it, and I guess because it was a mask in between the periods that they were manufacturing some other masks, such as the GM38, and then later obviously the Simplex, this was kind of the mask that ended up, you know, being the one that um, kind of looked like a hybrid between the two, which would make sense, wouldn't it? So the mask is actually quite nice quality. So as far as I'm aware, this was a mask designed, as said, for basically civil defence use and civilian protection. So it's got inside, if I just show you the inside and pull that, the straps on it seem quite similar before I put them on to the actual um, M65, again, Draeger made those, so that makes sense. Uh, inside you've got your intake valve there, that's not quite flush but that doesn't matter because it's the one the filter connects to, and your exhale valve is under sort of a mesh cover there, um, and then obviously that's the bit there. Whether or not that acts as a semi-voice diaphragm I don't know, we will find out. Let's hope that the XL valve is in good condition and the mask works. So it's a five point head harness and it also has one of those adjustable kind of, I guess it's either a carry strap or just one to go around your neck to further secure it. Also it just has a little bit of rubber going through there which is the chin support. Now by the look of this it looks like, yes you can, you can adjust this which is quite nice. So if I just pull this out of the thing, I don't want to damage anything, as you can see there are two holes in there. So the stretched one is the one that's been in for a while, and I guess if you had a particularly small chin, you could put it in the other hole to pull the bit across a bit tighter. I'll put it back into the original one because I don't think my chin's particularly small, but it's kind of nice that this was adjustable. You know, something that would have been nice on something, let's say, like the um, Draeger M65, but wasn't. And now, of course, now I've pulled it out of there, which I shouldn't have done. I'm struggling to get it back through. And with old rubber masks like this, you don't really want to do stuff like that, like I've just done, because, you know, if you break them, that's a bit of a problem. But it's gone through, because obviously that hole was already pre-stretched, which is nice. So, I think all the straps are fully loosened, so let's put this on. What I'm going to do after I've done the video on it is stuff it with paper, so it hopefully resumes some of its original shape. So, let's get my chin in, and thankfully, because I'm bold at the moment, that will not be a problem. Oh, and this strap's just popped out again, so... <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and men. It might just be where this strap's been in there for so long, um, it's not going to stay in all that well. But let's try again. So, put the mask on. The mask does have a bit of a weird smell to it, uh, but that's not particularly unusual, um, you know, old masks. So let's tighten the straps up now, and hopefully these straps tighten without damaging. Hmm. I don't think the buckle, there we go, wants to let them through all that well. So they are a bit like M65 straps, so they don't adjust all that well. Hopefully when I take it off as well, that won't be an issue. So, here we go. I'll do the other straps first and come back to that one, I think. Oh, shit. So, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I've just damaged that. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll probably leave these other straps 
because I don't want to damage it anymore. But that's the danger of old masks, as I said, the rubber on the straps tends to go. It's pressurising at least, so there's that. So what I'll do in a minute is I'll test it. Obviously I would not recommend, and you see it's fogging up, there's no oral nasal cup. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend old masks like this for practical use for obvious reasons. Again, with the either 40mm NATO or DIN thread, the filter goes on fine. But I don't know if it would actually, um, you know, due to the age, be a good choice for um, prepping use. But it's a cool looking mask. So, as the name would imply, this mask was one designed for, uh, I guess, civilians or civil defence in, in the case of NBC warfare. Most likely nuclear warfare. But as I understand from the production of these, probably as the production started in the 50s, they didn't manufacture them for all that long because as it became inevitable that hydrogen bomb warfare would wipe everyone out, if it kicked off, why bother making gas masks for, you know, civilians? Because their chances are not good. So what I'm going to do now is just get some banana oil, the isomyl acetate, and we'll see if this mask actually functions despite its age and despite me pulling a bit of the strap off. So there we go. Uh, I've not bothered doing that neck one up, but that's obviously just kind of a carry strap if you have it loose. So, let's see. So I've got the banana oil, let's do a check. I can smell it through the exhale valve. So yeah, annoyingly the exhale valve uh, doesn't work on this mask. So, this is more a cool collector's piece I guess now. So I said, yeah, unfortunately, uh, which strap was it? This one. I've uh, obviously buggered that strap, as you can see there. Um, so yeah, I suppose what I could do is I'll just thread this through a bit more so the strap doesn't come out. So hang on a second. Uh, so it has got those metal adjustable bits which would have been nice to have noticed beforehand. But yeah, I'll just thread this through like this now and then that at least is going to stay in even with the damaged strap. But yeah, there we go. So if you've got one of these and plan on adjusting it, Due to the age, I would recommend just very slowly adjusting the straps by moving a bit of metal. But this has always been a problem with these kind of early rubberized straps, um, that they are not easy to adjust. The mask does have a kind of nice, a bit like the uh, M65, it's got a nice sort of checkered thing on the inside there, and on some of the uh, sort of face piece. Also notice it's got no peripheral seal on this mask and no oral nasal cup, so it will fog up quickly. And if you haven't got the right size face for it, a bit like the M65, it's not going to make a very good face seal. So, if we compare it to civil defence masks of the time, the Z56 is probably a lot better than something like the C7 that Britain made, with the filter that couldn't be removed, although, as we've been discussing on the um, sort of gas mask Reddit, there has been a few examples of C7s later on with 40mm filters on, whether or not they screwed in or bodged on, who knows. But yeah. It's a very interesting mask, the Z56, um, very good as a collector's item I guess, and I've obviously damaged this one, just like the XM28, maybe I shouldn't be allowed near all these old masks, who knows, um, this is the reason I've said before I'm not getting World War 1 masks, because I know I just fucking wreck them, but there you go, um, so this is the Z56, West Germany, nice piece of history from the Cold War, because of like the white cream colour, it's quite a creepy looking mask I think, especially the sort of face profile of it, you know, a mask that looks like that, is a bit ominous looking to me. Um, but yeah, it's a very cool thing. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, I did that to it. But yeah, so Draeger Z56, I don't know if any other German company have manufactured these. Very interesting sort of timepiece, because as said before, the masks from the early Cold War are quite interesting, just simply from the fact that lots of countries other than the Warsaw Pact started off making civilian masks and then went everybody's gonna die, this is a waste of time and money and then stopped sort of manufacturing them for the most part whereas the Warsaw Pact actually kind of did have civil defence plans and with a planned economy it made sense to keep people manufacturing masks as you know keeping your economy running but yeah there we go if you wanted a German example of a civil defence mask that obviously later on became the better Draeger Simplex I'd say really if you look at the designs yeah the Z56 is pretty interesting in that regard